Hello, everybody. Talmar Anderson here from Boss Actions. And we are in the middle of our fabulous National Boss Day celebration. It's our interview series, Rock Your Bossitude. And today, ooh, have I got a good one for you. It's going to be hard for us. We're going to try to keep to the time limit. But I am so excited to introduce you to Katie Nelson of Sales Uprising. How are you, Katie? Hey, Tal. I'm great. Thank you for asking. Thank you for inviting me here. Let's rock our bossitude. Excellent. Oh, see, you make my heart sing. Let me first tell you all a little bit more about fabulous Katie. I know her too well, so I have to make sure that I say it all the right way so that you can get at least a beginning of a picture of all the awesome that is Ms. Nelson. Katie Nelson is a serial entrepreneur and speaker who comes at business with a revenue first mindset. You got to love the money. Fond of the saying, cash flow is oxygen. She provides her clients with a clear understanding that as a business, if you are not selling, you are flailing. The CEO of Sales Uprising, a business coaching firm serving clients nationwide, specializing in providing mindset, sales, and marketing tools for business owners who struggle to take home a six-figure paycheck. She has built her firm around the statistic that 90% of small business owners never reach the monetary goals that they dream of when they start their business. Girl, we could talk all day about that, but today we have to talk about bosses. The okay. good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, we're probably not going to focus too much on the bad. We might go a little into the ugly today, if that's okay. We got the stories. What okay. you need. <laughs> So, so let's just start with, I love to start with the positive ideas. So tell me about the best boss you ever had. So, um, that's a crazy story because I, and you know, I think about this a lot because I have a friend who's in the boss biz, uh, and I, I have a good manager who I don't think was my boss, but there was a manager. And so when I was thinking about good bosses, I literally had to go all the way back to high school for teachers. Okay, that counts, right? They're they're our boss. And they so, were my bosses. And so now, who was your favorite? Um, so I had a couple of different favorites. There was Mr. Taysom, who was our ninth grade chem phys teacher, and there was Mr. Miller, our uh, freshman year English teacher, who was also the drama teacher. Mm -hmm. um, but we had a lot of teacher, a, a lot of great teachers in my public school in Arizona. And so what made them a great boss? What made them great to make them stand out in your mind as great? Um, their accessibility. Mm, great one. Accessibility. Love it. Tell right. me more. So when, you know, you want to know what you can do to get a good grade or to be a good employee. And they were very clear in their expectations about what they were going to teach us and what they expected us to learn. And if we weren't learning in the way that we needed to, or we weren't understanding what they were putting forward, they were accessible for us to come up to them and say, so this isn't clicking for me. I realize that I should be getting something and I don't feel like I am. Oh yeah. And so they were available for that conversation to work it out with you. That's fantastic. I, I do love that is giving people the space to come in and ask questions, right? That's a giant principle of ours. So I love that you acknowledge that that was a thing because sometimes bosses can, uh, without knowing it, give a, give a impression, um, kind of a cloud around them. That's like, look, just, I'm too busy for you. I don't have time for this. You got to figure it out on your own. And so whether it's a teacher early on, or it's a boss today, understanding that they were approachable and you were able to access them and they would give you the time to work through the process. I absolutely, I, I love that that's the reason you picked them. That's a great one. It's, and so- It's really uh, just true. I know. Well, you know, it is. And, you know, we forget that creating space on our calendar so that the team can come to us and tell us they have problems or they want our insight or they, you know, need a little extra tool or something. It's super important to make sure that they have what they need for their business, right? That's, yeah. I mean, they're yes. trying to grow your company. So give them what they want. That's time with you sometimes, right? Well, and let's, I mean, not to dive too much into it, but <laughs> the, con the but concept of I've given you some training. So now you should know. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, not necessarily helpful. Everybody learns in different ways, right? So Absolutely. say you've got 40 people in your training class or 10 people in your training class, or you're training three new salespeople. Mm -hmm. They're all not going to hear it the same way that you said it or what you were trying to put forward. So having that 
time in your calendar to make sure that you are approachable for any, like, did it make sense? What questions do you have? All of that good communicative back and forth to make sure that our people really get it is just so important. Oh my gosh. I totally agree with you. And again, I want to go deep into this conversation, but it'll have to wait till another time, which we'll talk about later this week. Um, so let me ask you this. So right, you know, you're a serial entrepreneur, you've had teams in multiple sizes in multiple ways. My question is, you know, when you first became a boss, what do you wish you'd known ahead of time? What could you, what do you wish you'd known before you stepped into that boss role? That's such a funny question. Um, so more. in my very first business that I owned, yeah. I what I wish I knew was that I was a boss. Oh, you have the title before you know what the real responsibility is, right? Right. I yeah. started a business. I had my partner and I didn't really think too much about the bossitude of it all or the, mm -hmm. the running the business. I was just doing the business. Mm, doing. Oh, yeah. I was doing the business. Yeah, you have to shift your role. Like, I think that people don't understand the whole point of hiring is so that you change how you show up in your own business. And the more we go along that process, it lets you be more there and there for the people. If, you're, if you just fill that in with more stuff to do, the hiring isn't going to feel as fulfilling. And then you're stuck still in the doing, as you said. Yes, ma'am. I love it. So then tell me this. So when it was all hard, right? You've had, again, multiple teams, multiple sizes. When you felt like, dang it, I am doing everything right. I'm an amazing boss. I've got great benefits. I, I feel like I'm, you know, doing all the right things. What is it? You know, you, you might get a little discouraged. The team wasn't gelling or you had to let someone go again, even after they came on as this really rock star person, or you're just not finding the things. How do you stay motivated as a boss when you feel like you're doing everything right? Uh, I think this is a super important question. And for me, it may not apply to everyone, mm -hmm. That's but it okay. should. We want so, you. <laughs> uh, as you know, two of my previous businesses were in professional services and staffing. So 100%. I have gone through a lot of hiring, a lot of firing, a lot of those types of conversations, a lot of interviewing, like all this gray <laughs> hair is the name of an interview, right? <laughs> <laughs> don't scare people off. Interviewing is not that bad, you guys. <laughs> Whatever. Rock your gray. We all look amazing. Yeah, yeah. But so, you got to do the process. You got to work yes, the process. You've got to go through the process. And yeah. I think in the decade of hiring and staffing and doing all of these things, what ultimately I learned when it's super discouraged is that even if I think if I thought it was a fit and everything was looking beautifully and it didn't pop off for whatever reason, they decided not to take the gig. They showed up and it turned out they weren't who they said they were. hundred percent. It happens. Right. Like yeah. all of those things, then it's a, it's a higher, slow fire, fast situation 100%. with, with like the Marie Kondo of bless and release. And <laughs> We and, wish you well. <laughs> right. And thank you very much for letting me know that I got it wrong and, and that you weren't a right fit for this position or that position or whatever, or for me and my team. Yeah. Yeah. I so, love that. And you know, it's, it is hard to get, you know, get the emotion out of it. But the truth is, you know, the, the whole idea behind being a boss is, you know, we're working with humans that have changing priorities and changing motivations. And the thing I remind people is, you know, they really most people are coming into the interview and into the first day really believing they're going to do the best they can for you, but they're human and they have something else that changed that priority, changed that motivation, and they're just not able to be the person that they really wanted to be. And sometimes, I mean, it's still frustrating. It's still disappointing. Um, but I appreciate you sharing that, you know, the best we can just step into it and say, you know, better now than later. And we wish you well and, and get back to that process as soon as you can. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, some of the craziest things have happened, right? So if you, yeah. if you are in your boss space long enough and you're continuing to grow your team, you will not, you will notice that at times candidates may come back and they're, they're actually in a different place, mm -hmm. right? So potential employees do continue to grow. I don't know that. I think that you're right. When you say that people really do, I know you just said, tell me more. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you see, I perked right up. I did. Um, when you say that people really want to be that person, I think that for the most part, that's actually true. There is going to be a, a portion of candidates that are like, okay, so I'm going to take this job because what if it's the only job I can get? It's mm -hmm. my second choice and that's okay. Uh, yeah. it's your second choice for now. You know, I've worked for, um, 
it's not odd for somebody to have the for the best first and third job, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I totally get it. Oh my gosh, you were my best first and third job because they left because they thought the grass was greener and it turns out <gasps> it wasn't. So, you know, be open, be grateful, yeah. keep the process moving and just um, don't get stuck in the emotion of it. Like be yeah. disappointed for a minute. Have your little yeah. oh, so sad party. Or- we're human too. Boss yeah. are human too, right? And and then keep it popping. I love it. I love that. Thank you so much. So then um, tell me right now where you're at in your business. Uh, what What is the best part about being a boss with an amazing team? Uh, where I'm at in my business right now is six years in. Yes. I just made my first acquisition. So we're actually intertwining the systems and employees of two separate companies. Nice. And so where, what I love right now is all of the possibility. Oh, good answer. The possibilities. I love that right? All the places you could go, all the ways it's going to surprise you and the way the teams come together. And the, just the, again, it can be so, so fabulous, right? Exponential, right? So it's not just good word. Yeah. The synergies that get to be created and the things that I now get to learn from my team, not just uh, hopefully the education and experience and perspective that I provide them uh, along with some guidance and leadership, right? It's also yeah. what I get to learn. And that's always exciting for me as the boss. I know that's so much fun. Well, Katie, I'm so excited. I know that November 3rd and 4th, uh, out in Phoenix, Arizona, you're having your annual strategic planning retreat, which is phenomenal. And I'm sad to miss it this year. Forgive me. I'll be there next year. Um, but tell us a little bit about how people can find you and a little bit more about where they should be going to get registered for that event. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Have fun in cold places. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we'll be in Phoenix. Uh, how, if, if you are a boss or a business owner that has yet to do your business planning, that you have some really great ideas for your 2023, let's get to working on the business instead of in the business. This is actually your job as a boss. Telmar will tell you. I will. So I'm this fine. is where we create the direction that we're going for the next year for us and our teams. And you can find that information at salesuprising.com under the events link. I think Telmar has a link. I think she'll share it with 100%. you all. Yes, we will. Uh, it's November 3rd and 4th in Phoenix, Arizona. We'd love to see you there. Excellent. Again, Katie, thank you so much for sharing this. You know, you and I could have gone on much longer. This was as short as we could do it, people. We we just love to share our, our stories with you guys. Um, if you are excited about National Boss Day and celebrating the bosses you know and that you're stepping into and that you're working hard with, make sure to follow along with us. We've got a whole uh, conversations with business owners turned CEO series. So check it out at rockyourbossitude.com. You can follow along if you missed any of the other interviews. Make sure that you check it out. We we know we see you. We know how much you're working, but remember there's great bosses out there. You can step into that great boss role. And I promise you, it actually is easier when you do it the right way. All right, everybody. Thank you again, Katie. Boss on.